And welcome to this special Christmas concert here from one of this country's great municipal buildings, Hull City Hall in Hull, or to give it its full title, Kingston upon Hull. And we're here, it's, it's Christmas and it's a time for sharing. And I wanted to share with you one of these, this great, great instrument, one of this country's great and largest pipe organs. And not only have we got a huge number of pipes, a huge number of stops, we've also got quite a lot of percussion. So throughout the concert, you'll be hearing tubular bells, xylophones, glockenspiels, celestes, snare drums, bass drums, you name it. See if you can spot them throughout. I'll let you spot them during the pieces. To open with, that was of course a Christmas uh, special piece written for a concert opener, a festive overture that I wrote on Christmas themes. And I thought, since we hear this amazing organ, we should bring you a great, great Christmas concert. Tom's here, my brother, filming and recording for you, as usual, bringing you the sights and sounds of this wonderful, wonderful hall. And like many halls, this organ is often seen and not heard, so it's a great opportunity to play it for you. It's probably the first time in almost two years that it's really been used um, fully, really, because of the lockdown. Um, I'm going to move straight on with a piece which is perfect for Christmas. Of course, you couldn't have Christmas without the baby Jesus. And of course, what better piece than Jesu Bambino by Pietro Jon. Pietro Jon was of course an Italian organist who moved to America in the early part of the 20th century. He became organist at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York and therefore head of the Catholic Church, head of music for the Catholic Church in the whole of North America. A very, very important figure and a great teacher and a great sort of organ virtuoso. He and his brother actually set up a music school in Carnegie Hall where they taught people including Cole Porter. So a really interesting great musician but he's very well known for this beautiful beautiful tune originally an organ piece made into a, a carol afterwards this is Jesu Bambino
A beautiful pastoral in the Italian style, reflecting Jan's heritage and where he'd come from and the, his sort of Sicilian Christmas style. Um, you'll have noticed there, you had a bit of percussion, you had the tubular bell up in the organ. I'm going to get a little bit more now. Of course, um, it's Christmas and food is a very important part. I couldn't find a piece about Turkey, so I thought a piece from Swan Lake was the next best thing. And of course, it's a time for terrible jokes as well. So I'm going to play you the waltz from Swan Lake. A bit of dancing is also good at Christmas, so a waltz is the perfect thing. And while we've got all this percussion, I can make effects of them on this organ. You'll see this organ, it's got three expression pedals. It's an expressive orchestral type of instrument. So perfect, really, for these big orchestral transcriptions. Swan Lake, the great sort of... Uh, ballet by Tchaikovsky, very popular as a Christmas ballet. Um, I won't go into the tale now, many of you will know it from previous concerts I've given, um, but the waltz is one of the great, great big pieces and as with Tchaikovsky, many of his pieces, there's so many sort of really charming, beautiful, wonderful melodies that everybody knows, but they always build to this huge symphonic climax and this is no exception. A brilliant piece and this is a transcription I've done for organ solo. This is the waltz from Swan Lake.
a great, great piece of music, and I wish you could hear the sound of it in this hall. It's a huge, huge instrument, and it makes a terrific amount of noise. It's absolutely great in here. So hopefully you're getting a little bit of that at home. Now, Christmas, once again, the Messiah is a very traditional oratory which is sung every Christmas. I've performed it every Christmas several times for at least the last 20 years. It's one of those pieces that every organist knows. I've played the continuo parts, organ parts, harpsichord parts. I've even dressed up in period costume and played it at Christmas. And I've played it as organ solo accompanying people. But I thought the most famous movement without doubt is probably the Alleluia Chorus. And many, many people have requested this over the time for me to play as an organ solo. And while we're here on this big instrument and we've got big tubers, trumpets, bombards and orchestra trumpets it's a great way of using them and an instrument like this. Handel wrote this piece in 1741 and it's become known as a Christmas piece but originally the first performance took place in Dublin in Ireland in uh, the early sort of spring Easter part of that year. It became traditional then to perform it at the Foundling Hospital in London uh, and Handel used that as a charity performance to raise money for the, the Foundling Hospital in London and it's always been associated with that place in London. Um, a brilliant, beautiful, beautiful piece of music. And if you just go through the whole, the whole of the Messiah, you get some of the greatest music ever written. As I say, though, the Alleluia Chorus has got to be up there. It's one of the most famous pieces in the world. Made famous probably also by the tale about George II, King George II, who apparently, upon hearing this in a performance, either mistook it as the national anthem or thought it was a grand piece and stood up. And from then on, everybody, of course, as the king stood, everybody in the audience also had to stand. So if you ever wonder why, at performances of the Messiah, everybody suddenly stands up at the Alleluia Chorus, it's because of the tale about King George II. I won't stand up to play it, I hope you don't mind. I'll find it difficult to play with the feet. But I hope you enjoy this. This is the Alleluia Chorus by Handel.
Amazing, amazing music and so, so well known. I don't know if you could hear the bass drum that I added in just at the end, but I thought it was a, a very sort of nice touch to add in on the organ. I'm sure it's what Handel would have wanted. Um, we're going to be on to another bit using the percussion of the organ now, and another piece famous at Christmas, The Nutcracker by Tchaikovsky, and the most famous movement probably from this, the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Originally using the celeste, or celeste, um, an instrument invented by Mustel, uh, which uses tuned bars that are hit by hammers. Uh, it sounds a bit like a glockenspiel, it's a keyboard instrument, and this is the first time it was really used and what made it famous. Tchaikovsky saw one of these instruments and wanted to use it. He thought it had such a magical effect and so the sugar plum fairy was that perfect sort of beautiful way of depicting the sugar plum fairy on this organ we have a celeste and bells i'm going to use the ones on the top manual for this as the celeste part and it goes all the way up to the top and it's a perfect way of using that sound and a great way that instruments like this this instrument was opened by edwin lemaire who's famous for his transcriptions and bringing popular pieces to people through playing the organ um, and of course that's what this instrument was built for so this is exactly the sort of piece it should be played on um, I hope you enjoy this. It's a brilliant, brilliant piece of music. This is Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy by Tchaikovsky. A great way of using those uh, bell sounds and it, it, it's such a thing you think as an effect not many organs really have a lot of bells outside of theatre organs but for a classical organ they're so sort of adaptable and they sound just like Christmas really. Um, We've come to the end of the concert. I hope you've enjoyed all the music today and it's put you in a, a bit more of a Christmassy mood. Thank you to everyone at Hull City Hall for allowing us to come in today and record this and for looking after this instrument so well. Um, for many years, this hall had no roof on. <laughs> and, uh, it, this organ was open to the elements before being rebuilt in the 1950s and then the 1990s. And it's great that it's still used and so well looked after. An amazing part of this country's sort of heritage and musical heritage heritage really and it should really be used and heard more often I think so I hope you've enjoyed hearing it today and this trip to Hull for Christmas and it just leaves me to uh, finish with a great great piece of uh, Christmas carols really um, Christmas carols are of course the, the main part of Christmas that we all know and love and there's many many of them I've done a Christmas fantasies before and you heard the festive overture at the beginning and I'm going to finish with a Christmas celebration um, a piece I wrote just to sort of mix together a few different carols. 
and there's also a little uh, joke at the end which you'll spot, which has become a tradition. I've used this in a piano duet as well, but this is the organ version I've created of a Christmas celebration. But before I finish, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Tom for filming and recording. And we both want to wish you a very, very happy Christmas and a, a wonderful new year. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the concerts all year long. And so thank you so much for watching. And to finish today, this is Christmas Celebration.